Where does your mind go with that C chord? Okay, just chill for like a few minutes. I'll make this quick, okay? Just chill, just chill. Pretend you have nothing else to do. Pretend that the only option you really have right now is to sit, is to listen just for the next few minutes. It's the only option you have. There's nothing else to do, okay? Sit, 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 chill, 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 chill. That C chord reminds me of the mountains I'm seeing right now. It's beautiful. Still in Victoria, hanging with Vanessa. I have the place to myself, but she might walk in soon. We're at the top floor studying. And I'm doing this, this paper on microglial cells. It's a cell basically when we get cut, we get injured, something happens to us and inflammation rushes to the source, right? We need some extra blood there, we need repair cells. Microglial cells head down to the injury and help repair and you know get rid of damaged tissue, etc. Microglial cells can also create neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, MS because they're constantly turned on. And where there is no damage, they go get it. They're really good at synaptic pruning and they're like getting rid of old neurons and shit like that. But when they're on all the time, they're doing stuff that's so not beneficial to the entire body. They don't rest. They're on all the time. I saw that Amy Schumer has Cushing's disease. And you've seen Perry, I think, in another video, the palm cheese that we have. He has Cushing's disease too. He's like this wide. He's a freaking sausage. Cushing's disease is when cortisol, the, the stress hormone that comes out of your adrenal glands right above your kidneys, is on all the time. It just doesn't turn off. And in small doses, regular doses, healthy doses, cortisol is actually an anti-inflammatory. When it's on all the time, it's inflammatory. Well, damn it, Scott. This sounds like the body is really good at keeping homeostasis and it needs to be. And all these problems are a cause of like some kind of un uh, imbalance. Oh, you okay, Perry? Oh, you all right, bud? Wanna come up here? We're talking about you. Think about it. So I'm getting to the point. Microglial cells, too much, terrible, just the right amount, great. Cortisol, just the right amount, great. Too much, terrible. Okay, why are you so hard on yourself? You're on all the time. There's no rest. I believe that you may be hard on yourself because you believe that's the only option and the best option, maybe even the most efficient option to motivate. You're on all the time. You're the Cushing's. You're the microglial. You're just on. And this is the only way I know. I've, I've been on the whole time. I've had to make my way through life. Maybe you had a lot of responsibilities as a child. Maybe you don't have a lot of support right now. So the only way to motivate yourself, as you know now, is I got to be on. I can't rest. I can't take a break. And if I'm too kind to myself and give myself a little sense of ease, decrease the pressure a little bit. What do I feel like? I'm not getting enough done. I could be making more money. I could be studying more. I could be making more friends. I could be doing this, could be doing that. I need to do a side hustle. Being always on is leading to disease. Now, I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, disease has one source and that's inflammation. Oh my God, give me a break. When I say disease, I mean maybe even, I won't say disease, maybe unhappiness, right? That negative thinking that you've had and, and you believe you need in order to get things done. If your timeline's anything like mine on YouTube and Instagram, deleted Instagram again, can't handle that shit. It's uh, emotional well-being, a lot of fitness influencers, a lot of alpha males, you know, men with big penises. And their way to motivate clients and people online is out of shame or fear. Look in the mirror, even some famous psychologists. Look in the mirror. Look at where you are. 
How could you get this way? Look at how fat you are. What mistakes are you making? How could you let yourself do this to you? How could you become this? Your body is a temple. How dare you turn it into a mishmash, mush mush? So by hating yourself right now, you're going to motivate yourself to go to the gym, to eat healthy, to go to therapy, whatever it is. Great. What about fear? Fear is if you don't start going to the gym, then future generations will suffer because if you have kids and you're fat, they're not going to respect you or they're going to be fat themselves because you haven't adopted any healthy values. And when they move out of the house at 18, they're never going to talk to you again. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. We get into this future anxiety. And if this sounds familiar, it's because you've probably done it. Millions, billions of people do it and it works. It works. But not long term. A minor. Mmm, now it's sad. It doesn't work for the long term. Actually. Down, 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 down. Name the song. Okay, so you have another option, man. You have another option. You don't need to be so hard on yourself because there's another way to motivate. That actually lasts. And you guess the cheese of it all. It's by acting out of love for yourself. In this very moment, right now. No matter what you look like, no matter how you feel, look in the mirror. And you have to decide that in this present circumstance, your motivation has to be not that I'm working out to burn the calories I just ate, working out as a punishment, therapy as a punishment, meditation discipline as a punishment, joining Scott's coaching thing as a punishment. You're working out to see what you are capable of. That's what I'm fucking talking about. You're not working out to burn calories and to punish yourself for what you just ate. You're working out, you're going to therapy to see what you are capable of. What's your mind capable of? What's your body capable of? At this present circumstance, I don't give a fuck if you're 800 pounds. See what you're capable of. Okay, Scott, check this out. Two and a half pounds, I'm doing curls, baby. Kick ass. That's what you're capable of right now. Let's do that for a couple weeks. I want to see you move to the five. Let's see if you're capable of that. You are. But in this world of quick fixes, it's got to be 90 days, a fitness program. That's 21 days, 90 days, get a new brain in 90 days, you know, take these supplements for three months and be a new person. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. Everything you see online is too Good to be true, I promise you. I promise you there are so many scammers out there. If time is your ally and you want to see what your body's capable of, not in the short term, but in the long term, you motivate yourself out of love, not by hate or shame. Because we can motivate ourselves by hating ourselves and going to the gym because we're pissed off that we are this way. We can do the 90 day program. Easy. I can hate someone or something for 90 days. That's not hard. I can keep a grudge. But to love yourself and to keep loving yourself and love the progress you're making and see that any progress, no matter how small, is kick ass, that's the real challenge. Anybody can hate themselves. That shit's easy. <laughs> that is so easy. I've been playing guitar for so long and I only know four chords. What's wrong with me? I don't like my jawline. What's wrong with me? I don't like my gray hair. What's wrong with me? I get anxious when other people don't. Why do I hate myself? Because my calves aren't big. That's easy shit. But to love yourself, let's see what you're capable of. Let's see how you do that. The other thing I just want to mention, this should be another whole video is I wonder who you look up to. I'm really curious who you look up to. 
Who is your guiding light? Is it a person? Is it a thing? Do you look up to a tree? I don't know. I don't care. Who or what do you look up to? Who do the, what do all these people have in common? I even wrote them down. I did some research. Bill Cosby, Kevin Hart, Tiger Woods, Lance Armstrong, The Liver King on YouTube, Andrew Huberman, and Jay Shetty all have in common. They've all become morally bankrupt in some way. They've made massive, massive mistakes. And I'm judging them not as people, but remember what we talked about. It's different judging a person rather than judging a decision. And I can judge the decisions of all these people. Kevin Hart, worldly success still cheats on his wife. Liver King, lied about being on steroids for years and all his fans thought he was natural, trying to get as big as him. The dude's on steroids. Lance Armstrong, hit it for years. Andrew Huberman, this just came out that he was cheating on his girlfriend or wife, sleeping with multiple women at the same time. He has one of the biggest podcasts. People look up to this guy, especially men, with all of his neuroscience and, and advice. Jay Shetty, uh, plagiarizing all of his content, and then this whole thing about you know running a pyramid scheme and his online courses making millions of dollars. Who do you look up to? Who do you look up to? Because I guarantee you that if it's someone well-known, a celebrity, something like this, I had another one, David Letterman on here, cheated on his wife as well. Why are we admiring morally bankrupt people who make really, really stupid decisions? I'm sorry, you can go your whole life without cheating on your wife. I know at this day and age it's hard to believe. I would call that an alpha male. I wonder who you look up to. I wonder if you see these people in this, in this realm of perfection that you're trying to reach. That's why you're hard on yourself because you're trying to get to this sphere of enlightenment that they've all attained because you see the clips, right? You see their discipline, you see the happiness and the laughter and what they've created in their business. Trust me, I've been the same way. And no matter what you do, you fall short. No matter what you do, you fall short. And they fall short too, in big ways. It's not that they skip the gym for a week. It's that they hurt people that they love and people that love them. So why are you so hard on yourself? Is it who you're looking up to? And is it the way you motivate yourself to get things done? Ask yourself. So what would motivation look like if I truly loved myself? Question one. What would motivation look like if I truly loved myself? Okay, and you know, remember what you're capable of. Not about uh, burning calories. And this goes for therapy too, right? This goes for therapy too. Like I'm not going to therapy because I, I feel guilty for not self-improving. It's because you wanna see what you're capable of as far as understanding yourself and others. And who do you look up to? Who do you look up to that you believe is just morally perfect? That's, that's here on earth. Is it somebody online? Is it, you know, a celebrity, someone in your family? And know that they make mistakes. Know that the celebrities make big mistakes. Okay? And that's it, man. Motivate yourself out of love. And not hate. You've made your decision Now get up and leave Do you know the band Dry the River? Please check them out. If I had enough money, I'd pay them all to get back in the studio and make a new album. They had to stop playing music because they just weren't making enough money. And they're one of my top bands of all time. Such a shame. Such a shame. Well, that's about it today. I'll be playing some guitar 
and going for a, a hike in the mountains today. I'm gonna rent a car, I'm gonna go up there. It's like 15 degrees Celsius, beautiful here on the island. Mm -hmm. 